What's up guys, it's Moulin. Welcome to my first in-person YouTube video and also the first episode of a new series I'm starting which is called Loop Road Breakdowns. As the name suggests, this series is going to be all about breaking down samples that I've made and specifically samples that have already been placed. Now, as most of you guys probably know, I just recently co-produced Flocky Flocky by Don Tolliver featuring Travis Scott. And also Bubbly by Young Thug featuring Travis Scott and Drake. And since this is gonna be the first episode and Flocky Flocky was the first song to drop, this episode is obviously going to be about Flocky Flocky. If you like this format, be sure to let me know and I'll continue filming more episodes and the next episode might be about Bubbly in case you guys are interested in seeing how I made that sample as well. And before I open up the project file and show you guys how I made that sample, I would like to talk a little bit about like the backstory of how that song actually came about, how I got that sample placed and just in general the moves I made leading up to like those types of placements dropping since I am pretty sure that's probably just as interesting if not even more interesting than the actual sample. So Flocky Flocky was produced by Cardo, Desride and myself. And obviously those guys, I don't think they need any introduction. Cardo, man, he's the fucking goat, nothing else to say. He produced songs I listened to before I even started making music myself, which is insane to me. I think the same actually counts for Des as well, but if you don't know who he is, well, he has a list of songs he produced just this year, so as you can tell this man is going crazy as well so shout out to those guys so des and i we connected back in july of 2020 i think and he actually hit me up so he slid in my dms and he actually found out about me through the free sample packs i used to drop on instagram and youtube but mostly on instagram so yeah i started off my career with free sample packs the first pack i ever dropped was back in november of 2019 i think and I used to do the whole like tag three people in the comments to get access to the pack type of stuff. So obviously that concept itself was not a new idea, but as far as I know or as far as I'm aware, I was one of the first people to drop those types of sample packs on Instagram, like those free packs where you have to tag three people in the comments. Looking back, that was just a great way for me to get my foot in the door and like get connected to as many people as possible. Many people I'm working with now are actually people I connected with like right around that time of dropping free sample packs, Des being one of them. Des and I, like, we connected, we started working, I started sending him samples and shit, and the Flocky Flocky sample was actually one of the first samples I ever sent him. I think it was in the first or second pack I made like exclusively for him. Basically, I sent him the sample, he did his thing with the drums and added some more synths and stuff like that. Then he sent that beat idea over to Cardo who finished it and and got that beat placed. We'd known about that song and about its existence pretty much since October of 2020. So a couple of weeks before the album dropped, we got the confirmation, we got the paperwork, stuff like that. And um, well, I basically waited. I didn't hear the song until it dropped. And since I live in Germany, the album didn't drop at 12 a.m. but 6 a.m. So I got up at like 5.30 just to listen to the song. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I think that's pretty much it regarding the backstory of how that song actually came about. So let's just open up the project file and I'll show you guys how I made that sample. All right guys, so this is the whole project, the whole flocky flocky sample project. There's really not much going on. I'm just gonna play the sample first so you can hear it. And then I'm gonna start breaking it down one by one.
So as you guys can tell, the sample sounds exactly the way it sounds in the song as well. I'm really proud that my original idea was kept and used exactly the way it was. When I made that sample, I think I actually started with the bass, which is just one note and is actually a one shot from one of Coop the Truth's one shot kits. Um, I think it's from the Scansion one shot pack and it's called Luma Bass. And I didn't change anything about that pretty much. I only added some uh, EQ to cut the noise from the one shot. Then I layered that bass sound with a guitar bass and it's also one note, it's the exact same note. That's what that sounds like together. There's not much going on there as well. Again, some EQ to cut unwanted frequencies and then I routed that to a bus, which I'm gonna get into in just a second. Then what I started adding to the sample was the electric guitar and obviously we have the, the top melody which makes the sample the most recognizable I think. But before I added that I actually added this layer right here. What I added on here was just some EQ, some very slight delay and another EQ. Without any effects it sounds like this. So as you can tell, nothing special going on there. Actually I made that sample back at my parents house. So I didn't have any outboard gear, nothing analog, it's all completely in the box. And next I added some single notes from the electric guitar, which sounds like this. Those notes actually sound kind of dissonant when played by themselves. But in the context of the whole sample, it's, uh, you know, fits pretty well. The next thing I added are the keys, which are contact bank called Phono Loops cassette keys. The keys by themselves sound like this. I've been using their contact banks for like two years, I think, but I just recently started seeing them in many tutorials as well. So I'm glad to see that these guys are finally getting their recognition. Whenever I use contact, I'm most likely going to be using some phono loops bank of some sort. I only included the chords of the keys um, in the first eight bars. And then after that, I only played some sort of bass melody to go with the rest. because the whole chords would have been a little bit too much. Since the contact bank is so good by itself, I didn't have to add like any post-processing or anything like that. So yeah, sounds pretty old, pretty vintage, pretty nice. The most interesting part of the sample, I think, is probably the top melody. I'm gonna play the guitar top melody without any effects first, just so you can get an idea of what that sounds like. Again, nothing special going on, just the guitar plugged into the interface. Then I added some reverb, some RC20, shaper box to pen the melody from left to right, and some EQ. And that's what that sounds like.
so next we have this drum break right here which sounds like this i think i just made that with like some drum contact bank without any effects it sounds like this and you can clearly hear there's some pretty high like hissing noise and i just wanted to tuck that sound in the background just to give some more bounce but still obviously you have to leave enough space for the actual drums that's why i added this eq right here just leaving the mid to high frequencies pretty much then i added some effect tricks to reverse like this part right here then i added some good hertz lossy just to lower the quality a bit make it sound a little bit more vintage and some volume automation i made with shaper box and then just for my eq cutting some of the frequencies here we have some dynamic eq going on yeah um so the arp sounds like this Yeah, pretty much the same chord as the keys. And I've also had many people asking me where that sound is from. And it's actually an analog lab preset called High Places. So there you go. Without any effects, the ARP sounds like this. And as you can tell, it's like a bit too sharp, a bit too high. Again, like cut most of the high frequencies and i use the same plugins with the same presets on um, the arp as i used on the drum break which just makes them sound a bit more fluid together i think so again some good hertz lossy effect tricks with the reverse part and volume automation with shaper box and some slight delay the only sound that I haven't shown you guys so far is the um, strummed classical guitar. I recorded two separate takes and panned one completely to the left, one to the right, just to create a nicer stereo image. Again, basic EQ, cutting some of the high and low frequencies and the very slight dip on the mid frequencies around 300. Same with the other one, actually a bit more. And then I routed them to set bus channel where I added some RC20 and then I added virtual mix rack, um, some trimmer. I just boosted the volume with that, I think. Uh, some very slight compression, but if you look at it, it's not even doing anything. So I could have left that out completely, I think. And then the air EQ, uh, I think I just boosted the high frequencies a little bit with that and then some eq which is like not doing anything as well so i could have deleted that all right guys so i think that's pretty much it basically all we have going on is the nylon guitar or the classical guitar electric guitar right here as well the arp uh drum break and the keys so pretty basic um sound selection actually if you think about it so now let's quickly cover the master processing on the sample so what i started with is good hertz can opener studio 3 the angle is at 75 degrees and i selected the flip left and right option then some eq changes so i cut some of the bass and boosted the highs a little bit so sounds a bit wider and the equalization is doing like the most part i think uh then we added some very very slight compression some rc20 uh and some good hertz wow control and then finally i added a limiter which basically turns up the volume of the sample i think what many people are doing wrong when they're sending out samples is they're sending out samples that are way too quiet so uh, just make sure your samples are loud enough and then again some final equalization just taking out 
the bass frequencies a little bit and like some dynamic EQ on the high guitar notes. Yeah, and that's pretty much the whole sample. So if you have any more questions, just feel free to ask away in the comments. I'm an open book, so I'll try to get back to everyone and like reply to every question you have. Also, I just dropped a new pack uh, like a couple of weeks ago, a new sample pack. So um, feel free to cop that shit. It's on my website, thelooproad.com. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode or next breakdown, whatever you want to see. So yeah, bye.